Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the School of Light and another Image Breakdown. The Image Breakdown series is a series of videos where I am connecting in this first sort of set of images with people who um, are either very special to me in some way, I have a long history with, they are people who have been around light painting for a long time. But the most important thing for me is, is they're people who I think will genuinely add to you uh, as a light painter, as an artist or whatever. And today, um, well, it's an interesting one. And I'll, start, I'll say this is the next three hours, it's basically the bloody, the English crew. And the first one <laughs> off the lot is Tim Gamble. Hi, mate. Hi, mate. How's it going? Yeah, wicked. So Tim and I, uh, what we do with these is I'll introduce you to Tim and then we're going to have, and the image we're breaking down today is this one I'll put up on the screen here. I'll leave it there for a little bit just to whet your appetite because this is a cracker. But um Look, Tim, it, it's always hard for me to keep these introductions short uh, with these mm -hmm. guys because they are pretty special. And Tim is a guy who um, we, we sort of started hanging out on Flickr in 2013. Mate, I think one of your, maybe your second light painting image was an orb. Oh yeah, that's what got me. That's Legend. what got me hooked. Legend. Well, there you go. <laughs> the um, but here's some things. So I, I I make notes. I've got a big I've got a big list of notes here, and I and I like to write, um, big words and bold that I want. I like to describe people. So, um, Tim is a super experimenter. So mate, you one of the things I love about you is that, um there's all these amazing techniques in light painting. And I always like to stress to people that me, or, or I don't care how long you've been light painting for, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. And as artists and as light painters, what we've done over the years is we've plucked all these different methods and techniques and ideas, especially from those earlier days, because it was all new and fresh. And then it doesn't matter whether I refer to this image behind me all the time, you know, liquid light. It's like, oh, this is some fancy thing. Well, at the end of the day, it's just a blade and it's just reflections. I've mixed mm -hmm. a whole lot of methods together. Now, Tim Gamble is a guy who I think probably um, ha has done that with more precision and, and, and just this refinement than many other light painters that I know. Um, and I always enjoy seeing his images. He does a 365 project. Um, I think you've done four, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Yes. Uh, and, and I think, I think um, <laughs> anyone who does the, these amazing uh, 365 projects, when you go and you have a look, because you're not going to get a choice, I'm going to be smashing you with it. But when you go and have <laughs> a look at Tim's incredible photography, you realize that he's technically a superb photographer. And what happens is as we start talking about this image that we're looking at and refer back to a lot of his light painting, you'll see that the skills that he learns or that he develops in his normal photography are reflected in his light painting. Um, I'm just checking that I haven't, I've got here super experimental. Um, you bend the mind. You all, that's the thing. You all, when I look at your images, see, when I, when I look at a Dennis Smith, one, it's just the orb in the landscape, whatever, it's, it's, it's a thing. But I always love with you, and, and it's, I think it might be a British thing in your DNA, you guys love to create these deep, deep, in-depth images. Uh, and, the, and, and I've got here, super clean, and in big words, uh, I, I, th this may be controversial, but, but I'm just going to say it because I wrote it down, right? I, I feel like you made double exposure your own. I, I, there, there, were, there were definitely people doing double exposures before you. But what I love about your work, Tim, is that you, you took it as a technique and you've, you've punched at it and punched at it and punched at it and punched at it. And you just, it just feels to me over the years, I've watched you just, just keep sort of pedaling away at it till things like, and I'll put it up on the screen now, until things like this happen, this image here, which is just, I get delicious. Um, so there's a bit of an introduction. I like to, I like to keep these. Very kind. Oh, Tim, it's, 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 they, they, the reason those words flow from me, mate, is because it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's the truth. So I would like you to do two things for us, mate. The first thing I'd love you to do is is, is it's a complicated one because I'd love you to just just talk to us a bit about the idea right mm -hmm. so where the idea of this came from 
uh, a little bit about what it is. And then after that, we might break it down a bit. We'll go through some of the steps. You know, as with all of these, we're not going to be listing the X, the F stops and lenses or whatever. Because, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, there we are, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tim Gamble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Uh, yeah, well, usually with any of these, well, with most of my shots, especially when the ones that I'm doing outside of my house, they've been, it, I'll, I'll have found a particular thing that pleased me whilst I've just been messing around in my kitchen doing like my shot for the evening for my three six fives. And that, so, all this sort of faffing about that I do in my kitchen is like the proving ground for when I go out. So for this picture, I think the night before, I've been messing around with sort of multiple axis camera rotation. Ah. And so it was just like a Japanese maple leaf out of my back garden yeah. that I used. But I just did three equal rotations. So I start with the one in the middle, and then on my camera rotation tool, which is here, yeah. I'll pan my camera. So it's usually facing forward like that. Yeah. I'll pan my camera off to the side. Ah. And it has a very nifty way of offsetting the rotation. Yeah. So the one I'd done the night before was just three equal rotations. So the following night, I knew I was going out with Ty into one of my favourite tunnels. If, if you, how you can have a favourite tunnel, I don't know. But yeah, I you can. You're allowed tunnel. to have a favourite tunnel, mate. <laughs> That's good, mate. That's good. But, so we were heading there, and I, I sort of had this idea in my head that I wanted to do a triple camera rotation, sort of triple axis. And um, I thought, well, I also like doing backlit silhouettes. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to come up with a way of creating a space somewhere in the frame for a backlit silhouette sort of thing. Yeah. So this one, not only is it like on the rotation of the leaf element is on like three separate axes, but I've also tilted the camera to close down the rotations on either side. Yes. So you'll notice the one in the middle is quite wide open yep. because I've started with the leaf at the top of the frame in the middle. Yep. So there's one, one leaf there that's backlit with a little torch. So I'll expose that, put the lens cap on, rotate the camera and just repeat that round. And then you end up with the big one in the middle. So that's the perfect hole to put a person in. Yeah. And then because I wanted the outer ones to fit properly. Yeah. I moved the, the axis of the camera so that the leaf has dropped in the frame so it's a lot tighter on either side yep so i mean the the idea for it i had a rough idea but as we were walking down towards the tunnel it was like autumn slash winter and there was just i was just constantly while i was walking just looking at the ground looking for like a, a nice looking leaf yeah. that had fallen off the tree and i found one and then i was like right yeah that's what, that's what I'm going to do sort of thing. And Ty very kindly offered to help. Now I'll tell you something I, I always forget to do, and I should always do this at the beginning. If you, okay. if, if someone is watching this, that is an experienced light painter or does camera rotation, this is a no brainer for you, but uh, there is going to be a lot of people watching this that will not know this, but this image here um, is a single exposure. So you need to understand that um that, that Tim will start the exposure and then lens capping all over the place and then stop and then this is the image. There is zero compositing in post-production Photoshop. Is that right? No, 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 mate. Yeah, no. Amazing. yeah that's, or, not, yeah, that's totally. not the aim of the game. I mean, he's yeah. been through Lightroom. I think I've brought, brought oh, the sure. shadows up and I probably used a bit of a lens correction yeah. to get rid of a vignette. Um, but, yeah, yeah, but yeah. other than that, mate, yeah, no, that, totally. that's... As it was, mate. <laughs> oh, totally. But people, you'd be amazed how many people there's just, or you know, just assume. Anyway, I just wanted well, to... Well, put... yeah, and if, I, if I'd have looked at that before I started doing light painting, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, You know what I love to that's say? I... Got a photograph, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you, that's why you're lighting. <laughs> I reckon, yeah. I, I, I like to say, I like to, when people suggest that an image is Photoshop, I love to say, uh, yeah, I'm not that good at Photoshop. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't be out and do that, man. <laughs> oh, I, I, if I'd have started it when I took that in October, I'd have still been working on it now, I think. <laughs> All right. So anyway, I'll put, I just wanted to point that out. So so we've done the three rotations. So if I'm looking at this, mate, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, like how, how many rotations? There's, so because I, I've got, I was lucky enough to get a Thompson, a Chris Thompson and his brother, Alan, a rotate, a camera rotation tool. So I don't know how well you can see it. I'll sit back a bit. Yeah, that's so good. this bit sits plants in the in the tripod mount. Yeah. Your camera goes on here. Yeah. There's a threaded like the button to go into the bottom of your camera. So your camera sits on there, usually just facing because when I first started, it was all I was I used to spend like ten or fifteen minutes trying to ensure that my camera was pointing was on the perfectly straight line axis. So the the rotations would therefore be super symmetrical. Yeah. Because if you deviate from pointing forwards, like in the beginning, I was trying to avoid deviating my camera pointing off in a different direction because I wanted the rotation to be symmetrical and central in the frame. But then I think it was in like, I think 2015, I was like, I think I've just slapped my camera on here. Yeah. And set two, and the rotation was off to one side. I was like, ah, ooh, hold on a minute. <laughs> it's like, there's, there's something in this, I think. So what I've now done, you probably can't see, but I've got sort of lines yeah, yeah, on the yeah. back that yeah. line up with the back of the camera screen so I can pretty confidently sort of... Un so I always start off with the middle one, yep. the middle rotation, yep. because that's the hardest one to get right straight away. I'll do that one and then I'll just undo this little knob here and just tilt the camera off to one side, tighten it back up and then you'll get, so the opposite direction to which you point the camera is where the rotation will appear because obviously you're panning it across. Yeah. So it usually depends how far away the thing is that you're rotating, but it, I try to get it on a third, the right hand third and then the left hand third of yeah. the frame just because... Yeah, well, we, we like thirds, don't we, in photography? Um, so, yeah, um, so that, that's the camera rotation tool, and it's got, it, it's a, it, unfortunately, they don't make these anymore, but it's an amazing bit of kit. This bit here is a washer, uh, a windscreen wiper motor <laughs> at the Mark II uh, Vauxhall Corsair. <laughs> <laughs> which is just amazing yeah. but yeah and then it is that that's connected to this and you just turn it around but the good thing is with this one is i know that i got to, i do nine rotations yeah. of, that's one so i have to do seven of those take the lens cap off put the lens cap back on and I know if I do that nine times, I'll end up perfectly back at the beginning because I think it's like 63 turns. That's beautiful. Go all the way right. Oh, mate, it's a, I mean, it weighs a ton. You could like, <laughs> you could like it, but it's a light painting tool, mate. It, I just love it. It's the, the first thing in my camera bag, that, mate. That's so good. So you do, so you do the leaf rotations. Yeah. Then what's going we, on? There's a lot, there's a lot right, more well, happening. <laughs> Right, so we, what, what, how I tend to do them when I'm, I've got sort of multiple things going on that I want to line up, I'll, I'll work backwards. So I actually started when I was framing everything up, I put my tripod down and I framed up Ty in the tunnel. Yep. And I wanted him roughly in the middle of the frame, yep. something like that. I mean, this, he didn't actually turn out how I had it in the head. I wanted his silhouette to appear in the middle of the central rotation yep. but it didn't happen in the end but after seeing it i was like oh, I, I, I like that actually <laughs> so I, I start with the, so i plunk the tripod down and there i think the bit with tying i shot with me i think I, it was a 28 mil lens that i did that bit with so i framed tie up with that we put you can just see in the picture there's a stone on the yep. floor and that's his marker for where he stands so we, I asked him to step, take up a position in the middle for symmetry of this tunnel. And then once I was happy with that, I took the 28 mil lens off and then I put a 50 mil lens on and I was working on the leaf element. So the leaf element, as I say, I found it in the tunnel. It is, 
are, are just a cheap light stand. Uh, but these things are like lifesavers, like yeah. a little clamp. Yeah. So clamp to the leaf in here. Yep. And then, the, as I say, the first the first rotation element was pointing. My camera was looking straight on, so yep. it's for the middle rotation, the the broad rotation. So I put my light stand down with a leaf on, and then behind that one, I had another light stand with this little tiny little torch. It's a Coast G10, yeah, and I love it because it gives you a really tight beam. Wow, that is a nice beam. It's a nice tight beam, yeah. which is just big enough to illuminate a leaf like that. Yeah. And I put it behind, so I'm yep. backlighting the leaf because that brings out texture yep. and totally. all the interlacing, like the veins or whatever the plant equivalent of veins are called, <laughs> or uh, biologists. So I, I did the, for the I worked out the middle rotation. Yeah. And then I panned my camera all the time. So the first bit, I, I, yeah, I worked out the middle rotation, and then I panned my camera off to the side. Yeah. And then I tilted the camera up on the tripod yeah. because I wanted to tighten up the rotations on the left and the right. That's it. So, so once I was happy with how this all looked and I've got everything right, I started the exposure, but I started on the camera rotation bit. Yep. So I put my camera facing back forwards again, took the lens, fired the shutter, the leaf was being backlit, took the lens cap off for a second or two, lens cap on, Seven turns of that, lens cap off, lens cap on, and then went all the way around for the middle rotation. And then with the lens cap on, I tilted the camera off to one side. Yeah. Did the other one. And I tilted the drive, I tilted it back. So therefore the leaf that was up here, when I've tilted the camera back, the leaf comes down here, yep. but it's actually in the frame over here. Yep. Okay. So then I've rotated that, done exactly the same. A lens cap off, seven rotation, lens cap on, seven rotations, and then pan the camera off to the opposite bird, done it all over again. And then I've taken the 50 mil lens off that I was doing the leaf rotation, mm. put the 28 mil lens on, move the leaf and the torch out of the way. Ty took up position. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went behind him with light painting brushes, yep. orange filter, and the Rias Lightworks V2 that Dennis, who you uh, who you spoke to the other day, very kindly gave me. Oh, I love it. So anyway, that goes in there. And what I do is, so I went behind Ty, stood about, about six or eight feet behind him. Yeah backlight him yep to get a little bit of me a little bit of rim light round it well it's on and his fingers I, you can see it on his fingers and it's not yeah right yeah out. and then what i do i then change this torch to a really fast strobe and then it is me me, me second favorite light painting tool <laughs> which is uh my neck curtain <laughs> out <of> my back <laughs> room <laughs> Which is pretty, oh, I just love it. And it packs down really small and it yeah. just makes fire. Yeah. It just looks like fire for it, me. I was, so then, I, go on. It was the thing I was, I was really looking forward to seeing how you created that fire because it's definitely not EL wire. It's definitely not a fiber optic. It looks great. <laughs> oh, no, mate. I love it. Well, the, the reason I, I sort of, I started off with pallet wrap from work, you know, what they wrap around yeah. pallets of paper. Yeah. yeah. I started off with that like yeah because i was lucky actively looking for a way to make a flame effect yeah and then one day i was like i was sat on the loo near <laughs> sunset <laughs> right and the sunset the orange of the sunset <laughs> shining through the neck curtain in my bathroom <laughs> and i was like oh, that is yes so good. That, that's it so anyway so i get me like neck curtain yeah, yeah, and yeah, i yeah. sort of gather yeah. it up and then i put the torch on strobe and so the torch remains hidden behind the model or yep. tie in this totally. piece at all times. And then all I do is just sort of 
waft it, waft this arm up yeah. and down yeah. whilst it's strobing and waft the neck. And you can just see the, you know, I, I hope you can kind of see it. Totally. But, so I just go all the way around the back of him, that ra- round each side. And, uh, you yeah, know what's going to happen? Uh, there's going to be all these light painters. There's going to be all these light painters all yeah. around the world having their, you know, other people in the house wondering where the hell all the curtains have gone. I mean, the curtains gone. <laughs> so the <laughs> only... I'll tell you. Go on, mate. Go I know, on. I was just going to say, so... Um, so looking, so, so we've got the fire. Were, were there any other... So the green, the green little dots there are lens flare, right? Yeah, well, that that was a nice little byproduct of the tunnel where I was. It's it's an old railway tunnel which has been turned into like it's called the Monsell Trail. And yeah. It's been turned into like a trail for cyclists and walkers. It's like it's beautiful around there. Yeah. Um, but it was the train line that used to service all the lime kilns on that route because that's where they used to make lime, where they used to make quick lime. Anyway. In this tunnel at dusk, the lights go out. There's a sensor outside that knows when it's dark and the lights go off, I think, just to save electricity. But they have these little green LEDs in each of the strip lights on the ceiling of the tunnel, yeah. which are like almost like emergency lighting. So you, you can just about see where, like once you've been in that tunnel for about 10 minutes, you, you can just see everything's green, but you don't, you know what I mean? It's just there to help yeah. you navigate your it, well you've taken so. you've taken care of the green with a bit of red which is nice <laughs> oh yeah and that that was that really was a, a happy accident sort of thing those little little you know i balls. i um when when i i'm gonna sound like a broken record but but with with these image breakdowns but one of the one of the things that i've re- this is a personal thing that i've really enjoyed about doing them is I would never normally sit and look at someone's light painting image for 20 minutes. And I've, I've been mm-hmm. sitting here looking at it pretty large on the screen next to me. And it just reminds me, and I'm again, I'm a broken record, but people, what people that are watching this take the time to pause and look at images. Don't, don't be this person. You know, if you're genuinely on, on your phone scrolling through, whether it's, I mean, we all do it when you see something that strikes you or it stops you when you're scrolling for some reason, pause, go to go find it somewhere and just take the time to, to, to just sink into it because I already knew this was a pretty special photograph, mate. But now that I've been looking at it, it's even more kind of magical. Now, a couple of quick questions because I do like to keep these things reasonably brief and I could sit, I could sit talking to you about this for (laughs) days. Right. But is it, um, so how many attempts so the first question is how long is the exposure 10 minutes okay so that's not bad actually and how many attempts did it take to get it right don't want to sound like a smart ass but that that was my first go (laughs) (laughs) you know something i tell you something i tell you something tim it's amazing how many people man we look at these like because this is the thing and and it let me ask you a question before I make a statement. So someone wanting to try out this type of photography, whether it's rotate, because there's so many elements here, but we'll call it a, we'll call it a camera rotation image, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah someone wanting to have a crack at getting into this. It's a little te- rotation is a little technical because you do need some form, but there are, I mean, I just happen to have this sitting here, right? So this is, yeah. This is a rig. I put, boo. Yeah. I From put, Jules Boo, is it, I think? Yeah. I put this together just, you know, and, and it cost me, it's not cheap. It might have cost me a hundred Australian dollars or something like that. But what bit of advice would you give someone wanting to have a crack at doing this type of stuff, mate? Well, if you get you, well, obviously you need some of like that first to get cracking with. Yeah. Uh, either that, I think that's off, well, is either that or an iteration of that that Jules Boo came up with on the camera rotation Facebook yep. page. Yep. Or there's a gimbal by, I think it's Beaky or Beak, yep. B-I-E-K-E. They do an off the shelf sort of, because you have to build that one yourself with bits that you yep. gather from uh, Amazon or wherever. Yeah. Um, but the the beaky one you can just buy off the shelf. But mo- I mean, the most important thing is like you you won't. I, I'm quite sure how I've just broken that picture down. People, uh, quite a few people, especially people who haven't been doing it very long, they they probably won't get what I'm on about. 
I understand that. Yeah. But the the main thing, because if you, if I you'd have, if I'd have told me when I first got my camera rotation tool what I've just said, I'd have been like, you... I don't really know you. But the fact that I've had this for that long, and it's like the tool that I. I, like, I use it pretty much every day. Yeah. In one way or another. Yeah. And the main, the best way to get into summer is just to do it. Yep. And do it. And do it. That's why I, I, I like, I mean, it's not just based on light painting, but just in general. I just think people, sh you should do, if you do a 365 project, ending up making images like the one I've just done there, the, like the more technically sort of minded ones. Yep. It, it become easy because all I'm doing is just putting into practice everything that I've just been faffing about in because yep. that's all I do in the kitchen at night. I'll just I'll just mess about trying. Oh, what if I try and shine me like this way? What if I point my camera this way? Yep. And then once you do it over and over again, it's like, well, I've got that technique in the bag yep. now, and I've got that technique in the bag. And putting these things together, it, it's not. I mean, I think getting that first time was lucky because I went back and tried to do it again and I messed it up. Yeah. It wasn't as good. Yeah. I ended up sticking with the first one. So that, that's the aim of the game with all, all the light pain of it is just faffing about and messing up and trying to find... Because even in trying to find a particular technique, if you see someone online, you're like, oh, I want, to, I want to learn how to do that. Don't... Well, this is what I think. Don't yeah. ask the question. Don't say, how, hey, how did he do no, that? No, no, no. Like, no, work it out because what happens is when you try to work it out, you'll end up probably not getting what you wanted to in the first place, but it'll take you somewhere that probably someone's never been before. And I think that's like the, that's the important thing is like, that's how you'll find new cool sort of yep. techniques to that's it. mess around. That's it. And that I think my I, 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 I couldn't agree more. I, I, it, it's a recurring piece of advice that we're getting from everyone is just, a practice it takes years like this is the thing is is all of you guys that i'm talking to we've been doing this for a long time right but it's practice nothing nothing amazing is going to come from doing anything easy right and and it's practice you know people that do i was talking to palatith last night he calls it kung fo or something <laughs> <laughs> or people oh, thought it was kung fu but you know people yeah, and all that hey anyway mate look we need to keep this brief um yeah 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 look anyone watching this i am going to um i'm going to encourage you to go and spend some time hanging around not only your uh light painting sort of place tim but but to really go and have a look at your 365 project because i think i think uh one of the things that really comes to me about your 365 stuff is it's not like someone who's a landscape photographer that does 365s who you get 362 photos of a tree in three lakes um you know mm -hmm every day you are delivering like you it, it it yeah it will expand your mind it will make you think it will inspire you and 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 i'm i'm not inviting anyone onto these series that, that will not do that if you go have a look at um tim's feeds uh you you will see the the stuff that goes on inside this man's head and and it, it will inspire you to be uh, a, a better photographer and i want to say um thank you mate for uh, sharing some insight behind this incredible photograph, being so open with your techniques, uh, not just here, but, but uh, over the years and online. And um, thank you for being a good friend from afar. We've, we've never physically met, but I, I, feel, no. I feel a really beautiful connection with you, Tim. And um, I'm really grateful for that. And um, yeah, me too, mate. Thank you very Thanks for having me on, mate. Oh, it's much appreciated. And awesome to finally like chat to you as well, yeah. mate. It's just awesome. It's great. Happy so, days. yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. So, everyone, thank you so much for coming and joining us at the School of Light uh, and spending some time with Tim. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Tim. Cheers. Beautiful. See you later, buddy. Take it easy. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this visit to the School of Light. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be adding videos all the time. Head over to the Light Painting Tool Shop at the website. There's a huge array of tools I've made there for you to take on your light painting journey. Peace.